Um, can everyone see my screen? Looks like it's loading. There we go. All right, let me get this into full screen. Um, okay. Perfect. Awesome. Well, um, thanks for bearing with our technical difficulties, um, but we are really excited to kick off this three-part series about um, grant capacity building. Um, so we'll go through some backgrounds um, on the slides before handing it over to our grants team. But overall, I think going into this historic time where we are going to have uh, millions of dollars to put towards digital equity programs on the ground in communities, we really wanna make sure that we are reaching far and wide into each portion of the state to make sure that everyone who is interested um, has a fair chance at going after these historic grant dollars to help us implement our digital equity plan. Um, so that's really the idea behind this three-part series. This is the first part today. Um, all of these will be recorded and available. So if you wanna share out with other folks in your communities, um, we welcome you to do so. And then we also hope to bring this on the road. Um, so we know that not everyone has the internet to attend a webinar. Um, and so we're excited to kind of uh, bring this out into communities, come in person and utilize these summer months to get together. So with that, welcome to the State Grant Basics webinar, uh, part one of three. Um, our presenters today are myself, Devin Bronstein, Director of the Illinois Office of Broadband, and then I have my colleague here, Ling Ling Liu, who's a Community Engagement Manager here at the Office of Broadband. Um, she was having some technical difficulties, so Ling Ling, if you're back and you can hear me, just let me know and I'll hand the slides over to you. I'm back. Can you hear All me? All right. Can you hear us okay? Yes. Awesome. Well, I will hand it, um, I'll do my slides and then hand it over to you shortly. Um, so a couple of objectives for today. First, um, you know, we're always trying to get to know folks in the community and reintroduce ourselves as the Office of Broadband and Broadband Lab. We'll share context around the Digital Equity Capacity Grant and the program that we as an office will be launching late this summer, early fall. Then we'll dig into a lot of grant details. So you'll learn how to pre-qualify and navigate the state grant system. And overall, we hope that you leave this webinar feeling prepared to participate in future grant programs. Our agenda, first you'll meet our team, then we'll go through some context around the Digital Equity Act and state digital equity grant program. Um, then we'll hand it over to the Office of Grants Management to go through the details of GATA, pre-qualification and other requirements. And finally, we'll talk about next steps and go through questions and answers. And with that, Ling Ling, I will hand it over to you to talk through this next section. Thank you, Devin. Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies again for the tech difficulty. Um, I'm actually working out of Champaign this afternoon, so brand new space. I should have allowed more uh, time to check out the technology. Um, so thank you for joining us today. And uh, with the next slide, uh, meet the Illinois Office of Broadband and Illinois Broadband Lab. So the Office of Broadband was launched in 2019 with the Connect Illinois Initiative. Um, this office is under Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity of the state of Illinois, and it's been tasked with connecting every single resident in Illinois with fast, reliable, and affordable internet. So we are the wing that administers grants for broadband infrastructure, which you might know uh, named BEAD, uh, where we're receiving over $1 billion of federal funding um, and digital equity, which is uh, the main thing we're talking about today. We are uh, set to receive over $30 million the next five years for digital equity programming support. Um, the other side of our function is also to engage uh, regional champions and community organizations that um, do work in this space. So we have the grants side as well as the community engagement side. And uh, with the next slide, uh, Illinois Broadband Lab, which is kind of our sister organization, part of the same team uh, with the university side. Uh, they contribute to the Office of Broadband's vision and partnership. 
Um, they are uh, the wing that tests with research, data mapping, gathering, and digital navigation resources. They also lead a statewide engagement um, partnership through public university uh, across Illinois uh, called Broadband Ready. Um, so their functions include uh, managing the Illinois broadband map. Uh, they also created the county one pagers. Uh, they manage multiple dashboards and different broadband research projects. And uh, we also house the digital navigator network uh, under Illinois Broadband Lab. Um, here's a link to their website. Um, we offer a lot of free resources for you to draw upon in your broadband and digital equity work. Next, a uh, little context about the Digital Equity Capacity Grant. Uh, as you all know, the Digital Equity Act uh, in 2021 provides uh, $2.75 uh, billion nationwide to establish three grant programs that promote digital equity and inclusion. Um, these programs' goals are to ensure that all people and communities have the skills, technology, and capacity needed um, to get the benefits of our digital economy um, in today's uh, society. Um, so the first grant is called the State Planning Grant, which is already complete. Uh, in Illinois, this was funding for states to create their digital equity plans. Uh, as you all know, the Illinois State Digital Equity Plan was finalized and approved and is currently posted on our website. Um, and second one is the Digital Equity Capacity Grant, which is the main focus of our conversation today. Um, this is funding for states to implement the Digital Equity Plan. And as uh, I mentioned earlier, um, this is over $30 million expected for Illinois over the next five years. And then the third part of the Digital Equity Act is a competitive grant, uh, which is coming soon in fall of 2024. Uh, this is 1.25 billion national uh, funding to implement digital equity projects. So this is another resource in addition to Illinois' um, Digital Equity Capacity Grant that uh, the Office of Broadband will be administering. Um, so as I just mentioned, our state digital equity plan has been approved and uh, feel free to read about our strategies and all the work that, that we're planning uh, to do to uh, improve digital equity and digital inclusion in Illinois. Um, it uh, also, the approval of this plan unlocks the oppor opportunity for Illinois to actually apply for the capacity grant allocation. Uh, and the first uh, allocation from NTIA is uh, $23.7 billion, uh, million dollars, my apologies, not billion, that would be amazing, uh, to implement the plan. As you can see, we have uh, five different uh, core activities in the state digital equity plan and the state uh, digital equity grant program is one of the five core activities. Uh, we are currently in the process of creating a statewide digital equity grant program. And the next slide I believe is the timeline. So uh, back in 2023, uh, we engaged and uh, engaged stakeholders across Illinois to put together the state digital equity plan. And this March, NTIA released its NOFO and initial allocation for the states and Illinois is getting $23.7 million. And in April, so just last month, uh, the state digital equity plan was approved. And right now in May and June, we're working uh, very diligently to gather community input on the notice of funding opportunity. Um, there are tons of opportunities for you to engage. I know some of you have already participated in our co-creation workshops. Thank you. Um, there will be more coming up. And estimated this August, we'll be launching this subgrantee program. So the notice of funding opportunity will be posted for you all to apply. And then uh, in August and September, we will putting out resources and support all the applicants so that they um, have the know-how and capacity to write strong uh, applications. And then uh, estimated this fall, uh, all the grant applications will be due. And then early 2025, the funding will be distributed to the grantees and the implementation work begins. Um, as I mentioned, this will be a five-year process uh, for over $30 million in Illinois for digital equity programming support. 
So um, I've talked about NOFO a couple of times. Uh, if you have already applied uh, for grants with the state, you probably know, especially uh, if you can see the example here, this is the Digital Equity Capacity Kickstarter grant program that we administered last year. So a NOFO is a Notice of Funding Opportunity. Uh, this is usually shared and posted uh, to the public that outlines the key information that you need to understand uh, in order to apply for grant funding. Um, this document usually includes information such as uh, who's eligible to apply, the timeline and important dates and deadlines, uh, how much grant uh, award amount would be given, and also uh, what are the required documentations and paperwork for this application. And then finally, the detailed process for applying. Currently, we do not have the NOFO ready yet. As, as I mentioned earlier, this will be posted in August, but uh, we are sharing information as we have them, just so that you can be first in the know of what is coming. And also uh, with the Digital Equity Capacity Grant, NTI does require that we prioritize funding to serve the covered populations um, and these populations include low-income uh, households, aging populations, so folks who are 60 years and older, incarcerated individuals, veterans, people with disabilities, rural inhabitants, racial and ethnic minorities, as well as people with language barriers. Uh, it is important to note that 72% 70 uh, of Illinoisans are part of these identity groups and communities. And these are populations disproportionately impacted by digital inequity, and hence the requirement uh, from NTIA to prioritize funding in serving these populations. Um, here are a list of tentative grant project types that will be um, under this grant program. Um, this is also subject to change based on our design process uh, and adherence to program and agency requirements. Um, so if you've participated in the co-creation process, you probably understand these very well. And if not, uh, feel free to join the upcoming opportunities to dive deeper into each of these project uh, areas. The first one is device distribution programs. So think about distribution of laptop, computer, and other device to covered populations. Um, the second one is digital literacy and skills training. So think about classes, workshops, coaching opportunities, and all other learning opportunities to help covered populations build digital skills and confidence. Um, the third one is digital navigation and tech support. So think about digital navigators, individuals embedded in communities. Um, they are trained to help connect covered populations, access affordable broadband, access digital skills building opportunities, and all the other essential resources and tools necessary for today's uh, world. And then broadband affordability program. Uh, this one is specifically uh, focusing on multi-dwelling units, affordable housing, and other residential communities. So these would be smaller infrastructure projects to increase affordability within these environments. And uh, I believe NTIA uh, require that only a very small percentage of funding can be used for this purpose. So that is why we're choosing this specific area. And then access expansion feasibility study. So again, this is an opportunity for communities to chart your own path, plan your own broadband journey uh, to uh, expand access in your communities uh, through local coordination and planning. And finally, coalition building. This would be seed funding for regional or local digital equity coalition formation, building, and growth. We all know that coalition building is not free. It takes a lot of time and resources and expertise, and we want to see more uh, coalitions, you know, digital equity alliances formed across Illinois. Um, this is important work, and we want this work to be sustainable. So it is important that we have local structures and teams to support this growth uh, ongoing. So um, without further ado, um, in, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Other, otherwise, I'm handing over uh, to Amber Broughton with the Office of, of Accountability 
They are the experts in state grant basics, and um, she is going to cover uh, how you can get pre-qualified so that you're ready to uh, uh, submit your grant proposal. All right, great, thank you. And uh, Ling Ling, will you be advancing the slides or Devin? I got it, Amber, so I'll, I'll try and adjust. And um, let's, I'm sure folks will have questions, so we'll try and wrap up by maybe 1.45 latest to, to leave time for that as well. Sounds good. All right, uh, so like Ling Ling said, my name is Amber Broughton. I am with the Office of Accountability. Um, I am a technical support manager, so I work uh, with our support team um, helping grantees get ready with uh, grant requirements, uh, whether that's applicants that are interested in grants to uh, throughout the active grant life cycle. So uh, making sure that grantees are aware of grant requirements and reporting and that sort of thing. So I will go ahead and get started. Next slide. Okay, so I will review the DCEO grant process. Um, I'll talk about the GATA grantee portal. Uh, that's an important um, item that you can uh, start on now before um, the NOFO comes out. Pre-qualification, kind of what that entails and what, what you can do to get ready for um, when the grant comes out. Notice of funding opportunities, I'll touch on uh, those. And then what to expect if you are awarded the grant. Um, what are the requirements once you are a grantee with DCEO? All right, so this is a big picture kind of overview of the grant process. Um, so we are in this beginning stage, this, the pre-qualification. So you want to make sure that you have those pre-qualification items in place and then you're in good standing. You want to make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row before it is time to submit an application. Also talk about the fiscal and administrative assessment, internal controls questionnaire, or ICQ. Um, so then after that, if finding, you know, the grant for you and it is time to submit the grant application documents, then uh, competitive grants are reviewed by a merit review committee. Um, and then those those applicants uh, will receive notice from DCEO either way, if you're going to be awarded the grant or not. Then it's time to uh, develop the grant agreement. So you'll receive a notice of state award or NOSA as we call it in the GATA grantee portal for you to accept. Then it's time to develop the grant agreement. This is the grant, the grant agreement is gonna lay out all of the project expectations, all of the grant requirements. So uh, no surprises, it's all gonna be laid out for you in this grant agreement. You're going to sign it as the grantee. DCEO leadership will sign it as the grantor, and then it is considered um, executed, an executed grant agreement. Then it's time for um, implementing project objectives. So as you begin implementing uh, the project, you're going to be submitting periodic financial reports and periodic performance reports to your DCEO grant manager. Then you're going to be reimbursed for those expenditures that are listed in those reports. You will also be submitting annual audit reports in the GATA grantee portal. Then it's time for the closeout of the grant. The grant will be closed or possibly extended once the grant period ends. Next slide. Okay, so I've used this term GATA. GATA uh, refers to the Grant Accountability and Transparency Act, which the state of Illinois adopted the federal grant guidance and regulations that are codified in 2 CFR Part 200. So we took the federal guidance and we adopted them to Illinois grants. And uh, this is used uh, throughout all Illinois state agencies. Um, it is used to increase accountability and transparency. Uh, so that is where GATA comes from. Like. All right, and then we have the GATA grantee portal. So this is a statewide grant management system and it is used for grant activity across all agencies. So if you've had a grant with DCEO before, you're likely familiar with this. If you've had a grant with another uh, state agency, then 
you likely already know about this one. But if you are brand new to um, the GATA grantee portal, this is something that you can get started on right away. And I just put the link for the portal uh, in the chat. Um, you would create an account by clicking on this button in the middle here that says create an account. If you already have an account, then you would click on the left side that grantee portal sign in. Next slide. Couple of tips with the GATA grantee portal. If you are brand new to this site, I highly recommend uh, looking at this GATA new user guide. And I just put the link in the chat. This is a PDF that provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to register in the GATA grantee portal. Um, it is an excellent resource for not only new portal users, but I find it helpful for current portal users um, to kind of navigate the, the site and all of the pre-qualification items. Also recommend checking out um, the Grant Accountability and Transparency Units site. They are with the Governor's Office of Management and Budget. So they are the statewide experts on all things GATA, all things grants. Um, they have a large amount of resources on their site. Uh, so if you do have any questions or if you wanna you know, take a deeper dive into uh, certain GATA related topics, um, that would be a good website to check out. Next slide. All right, so pre-qualification. What do we mean when we say pre-qualification? Uh, the state of Illinois has defined a set of requirements for all organizations seeking to receive grant funding. Um, entities wanting uh, funding will need to meet these requirements and be deemed qualified and in good standing. It demonstrates that you've met all the legal requirements and obtained all the necessary registrations. So not only does this pre-qualification status need to be in place uh, when you are applying for a grant, but it also needs to ma be maintained um, throughout the lifespan of the grant, um, especially when it comes time for uh, developing the grant agreement. So if it's uh, been a while since your entity or your organization has been in the GATA grantee portal, um, it's worth a look uh, to see where you are in the pre-qualification. Um, if you do need to check on uh, a certain registration, a certain requirement, um, it's good to uh, get that out of the way now um, before uh, grant submission time. Next slide. So this is a screenshot of uh, what your pre-qualification status could look like in the GATA grantee portal. And when you're in the portal, you. Uh, scroll down from the main page and you'll see this pre-qualification status. So it has all the pre-qualification items. You see a couple of items that are in red. So that means that there is some issue with that certain pre-qualification item that needs to be addressed by you as the grantee. So uh, the little button to the left says help. So you can click on that button and it'll help guide you through how to remediate that issue. Um, there's an item in yellow here that is considered pending. It's usually something that is being evaluated or reviewed by the state, and it will work itself out within a day or two. So nothing that you need to do with those yellow items. It's those red items that you're going to want to address um, as soon as you can. Slide. Now I'm going to go through each of these pre-qualification items. Uh, you need to have an active SAM.gov registration. Uh, this is the federal uh, system of award management or SAM.gov. Um, it needs to be validated annually. Uh, one um, thing that you, you want to check on with your registration is that it is set to public, not private. This is to help ensure that the federal site SAM.gov can sync properly with the state site, the GATA grantee portal. Um, you also want to make sure that when you are registering, you're going to receive that UEI number. It's a unique entity identifier number. Uh, once you receive that UEI number, you're going to use that in the GATA grantee portal, but that is not the end of the registration. Oftentimes, we'll see folks 
uh, receive the UEI, and then we'll stop the registration. There are more steps involved, and you do need to have a complete registration to fulfill this requirement. Next slide. Federal Employer ID Number, or FIEN, um, it's a business entity identification number that is, uh, you can receive it free of charge from the IRS. Uh, once you sync your SAM.gov registration with the GATA grantee portal and you input that FIEN number, uh, nothing that you need to do um, additionally with this number. If there are any issues, uh, it will pop up automatically. Next slide. Your entity cannot be on the federal excluded parties list. Um, if you are on this list, it will automatically update. It'll let us know um, there, there may be a non-compliance issue with a federal grant uh, that might be remediated. It does kind of depend on the severity of the issue. Um, but if you are on this list, um, then that means that you are not pre-qualified and are not in good standing with the state of Illinois. Next slide. You need to uh, be in good standing with the Illinois Secretary of State and obtain a certificate of good standing. So this can be obtained at ilsos.gov. I will throw that into the chat. Okay, so they um, they have a good website that goes through how to how to get that certificate of good standing, but that is a requirement. Uh, the exception for this will be governmental entities. They do not need to obtain a certificate of good standing. This is for nonprofits and businesses. They will need to obtain that certificate of good standing. You also cannot be on the Illinois stop payment list. Um, if you do find yourself on that list, it uh, usually means there's a past grant that you've fallen out of compliance. Um, maybe you've missed a report, maybe you've missed an audit, that sort of thing. If you do uh, find that your entity is on this list, it is likely something that can be reversed. It's usually, um, you know, you're missing an item such as a grant report. Um, if you have any questions about this, you can contact your former grant manager or your cognizant agency. Um, you can contact us at dceo at ceo.granthelp at illinois.gov, and we can help um, guide you through how to remediate this issue. This is one of those items that you want to make sure um, that you address as soon as you can and not um, the day before a grant submission is due because um, it might take some time to remediate the issue and uh, be in good standing. So next slide. You also cannot be on the Illinois DHFS sanction list. Um, this is uh, the Department of Healthcare and Family Services. They have the authority to impose sanctions on entities and individuals. Um, it's usually something pretty severe, a violation of an administrative rule, civil law, criminal offense. Um, if you are on this list, um, that means that you are not pre-qualified and not eligible for uh, state of Illinois funding. Next slide. Couple of tips with the GATA grantee portal. You want to make sure that you maintain a current and accurate contact list. So you want to make sure that the right people at your organization have access to your entity's uh, portal page and that the right people are receiving notifications. So uh, this is a screenshot of the main page. You scroll down to grantee portal access and that button that says manage, that's how you can uh, manage uh, who has access and who's getting notifications. You also wanna make sure that your fiscal year end date is accurate in the portal. Um, this will come into play when it's time for audits, um, audit reporting. So you wanna make sure that fiscal year end date is accurate. Next slide. Uh, so uh, like Ling Ling said, uh, the notice of funding opportunity, this is the document that you're gonna want to read uh, front to back. This has all of the information about um, that particular grant, um, all the information that you need to know for submission. So it's gonna have the program description, funding information, um, who is eligible to apply, how to submit, uh, your application, your application documents, uh, what the review is going to look like, what um, the review committee will be looking for, 
um, and then other information, administration information, contact information, that sort of thing. You also can find other notice of funding opportunities on our DCEO uh, website and in the Catalog of State Financial Assistance. Slide. Um, on the DCEO website, it's dceo.illinois.gov slash DCEO grants. Uh, when you land on there, you can, this uh, button that says apply for funding, then it'll have a list of all of our current DCEO grant opportunities. You click on the one that you're interested in. Uh, when you get to that page, it'll have a short summary of some important uh, points. And then you go down to, it says NOFO supplement. So when we say NOFO, that's what this is. The NOFO supplement is the, the PDF that is going to have all the information for that particular grant. Next slide. Fiscal and Administrative and Internal Controls Questionnaire, or ICQ, that's one of those that you can um, kind of get out of the way in the portal, have that ready to go. This is a questionnaire that needs to be completed every state fiscal year. It is uh, used to mitigate risk and build grantee capacity. I want to note that it is not punitive. It does not determine whether or not you're going to receive funding. You're going to be asked a series of questions about your quality of management systems, financial and programmatic reporting, your ability to effectively implement requirements, and your audits. So that's done in the GATA grantee portal. Um, just, just to let you know um, some of the post-award requirements. So if you are awarded a grant, kind of what to expect um, once you have that grant agreement in place. You're gonna be assigned a DCEO grant manager and you're going to be submitting your periodic financial reports and your periodic performance reports to that grant manager, unless you hear otherwise. In the GATA grantee portal, uh, you will be submitting an annual consolidated year-end financial statement and audit. Um, just want to bring that up so that you can keep in mind that there will likely be a cost associated with an audit that the grantee will be responsible for. So um, that's something to keep in mind too. Uh, you'll be responsible for finding the auditor and those expenses. Next slide. The type of audit uh, that will be needed is, is determined by the total expenditures of federal awards and the total expenditures of state awards. When you are in the GATA grantee portal, the first step in the audit process is called step one certification form. You're gonna be answering a series of questions uh, that will determine what type of audit is needed. So this table here just goes through um, the different types of audits and how that's determined. But like I said, when you're in the portal, that first step will guide you through uh, this table. Uh, you have lots of uh, resources available to you, uh, not only as an applicant, but as a grantee throughout the whole process. Uh, we have our DCEO grantee resource site. Um, highly recommend checking this out. We have a video uh, training and resource library that has uh, several short video tutorials on many of the topics that I've talked about today. So kind of preparing for a grant with DCEO um, to submitting that grant application to when you are a grantee, those requirements. Uh, so definitely recommend checking that out. We also have um, upcoming grant training. So we have uh, monthly trainings on pre-qualification. So if you want to um, hear a little more about pre-qualification and those requirements, uh, we do have a monthly training on that. We also have a monthly training on revolving topics. So many of the topics that I've talked about today, um, we take a deeper dive into um, those grant topics. We have topics on um, writing a a uh, successful grant application. We have um, all, all sorts of grant topics. Um, we You can sign up for um, more information about those. We also have virtual office hours every Tuesday from two to three. Uh, myself and my colleagues in accountability, we um, jump on a WebEx call and you can bring your questions um, for us and we'll, we'll try our best to answer them. Um, 
And if you sign up for that, uh, that invitation list, you'll receive more information about that. We also have our uh, grant help desk. That's at ceo.granthelp at illinois.gov. Uh, this is our virtual help desk that myself and my colleagues um, man and we, we answer all sorts of GATA and grant related questions. So feel free to email us if you have any questions um, that come up. And that is all I have. Thanks. Thank you so much, Amber. Um, next up, we have two more capacity building uh, workshops for you all um, to access. Um, these would help ensure that uh, grant opportunities are inclusive and accessible to all organizations, uh, especially those who may lack the capacity to write a grant uh, or uh, building digital inclusion programs. So on June 5th, we have one that's coming up on how to write a great grant application. So um, it will include uh, tips on how to write strong digital equity grant proposals, including understanding the NOFO, the essential grant components, such as program narrative, budget, project plan, impact measurement, and scoring criteria. And the one on June 12th is about building a strong digital inclusion program. Um, you will be able to hear from successful digital skills building and digital navigator programs about how to structure a program mission, measure outputs, outcomes, and determine metrics for success. So we really hope that this um, three-part series um, help better equip you uh, to uh, take advantage of this um, historical uh, state digital equity uh, funding coming up. And also, um, we want you to uh, stay in the loop um, and receive the most up-to-date information about our grant programs, uh, action items, and get inspired by other Illinois broadband partners. So please fill out our uh, partner intake form. You can scan the um, barcode or uh, go to bit.ly slash IOB partner. This will ensure that we uh, reach out to you with information most relevant to what you do. And also we have a biweekly newsletter called Illinois Broadband Connections. Uh, this is the one way you can get the most updated information on where we are with all the work we're doing. And finally, we are on social media, Illinois Broadband Lab. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So again, um, multiple ways for you to stay connected and get the most uh, updated information about what's coming up. And um, I think now's the time for uh, Q&A. Okay, Thank you so much, Ling Ling and Amber. I uh, hope that was really helpful for folks and we'll be sending around the recording, the slides and all of the links that you saw. So uh, the grants email address, office hours, our intake form, um, anything you need to stay up to date. But with that, if folks wanna throw any questions in the chat or we can wait a little bit and you can unmute and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Good afternoon. This is Angel with Iroquois Economic Development. How are you guys doing? Good. How yeah. are you doing, Angel? Well, not too bad. I'm on the road right now. But um, so eventually we will be getting to the point where we're going to be learning about the, the digital, digital equity program in itself that's coming out. So in areas, the people that we want to contact to make sure that they're aware, libraries, what other um, agencies or organizations off the top of your head in rural areas have been participate, would want to participate in these programs? Do you have, I mean, just thinking about it. Are you asking about agencies who are helping to get the word out or eligible applicants? Well, obviously they're gonna have to sign up for the grant in order to be an agency to do that outreach. But what have you seen in the past? What other organizations in rural areas have been already doing this type of outreach? Um, sure, so let me share some like broader context of where this grant sits and then um, Ling Ling, or if we have any other colleagues on the phone who wanna speak to some strong rural partners in the digital equity space. 
feel free to jump in, um, Robbie as well, to speak to the Ready program. Um, so just to kind of put this in context, basically what will have to happen next before this program launches and goes live is uh, step one is that the Illinois Office of Broadband had to apply to the National Telecommunications and Information Administration or NTIA to actually tap into that first allocation of 23.7 million. Um, so we submitted that application on Friday and have this grant program written in as a big line item in our budget. Um, we anticipate getting allocated those funds sometime in late summer or early fall. And then as soon as we have those, we'll be pushing out this notice of funding opportunity um, so eligible applicants can apply for the digital equity statewide grant program to implement di different elements of our state digital equity plan. So Ling Ling shared some examples before, but that could be a digital navigator program, meaning um, putting a trusted local resident um, embedded in a library or a healthcare organization or a nonprofit who can connect community members to affordable internet, to other skill building programs, other essential resources. Uh, funds could go towards a nonprofit who is uh, distributing devices. Um, it could go towards a local library who's doing this sort of programming. Um, so that's kind of the like series of events. In terms of existing partners doing this work, um, Robbie, I don't know if you want to speak to some of the strong ready partners in the more rural parts of the state, or if Hillary's online, she can speak to some of the libraries doing this work. Anita, go ahead. Hey, good afternoon. Um, this is an amazing uh, question that you have. Robert, did, yeah, I saw you came off. Do you want, you want to go for it? Okay. So um, just kind of piggybacking on Devin to give you a little bit more context. Um, really, the purpose of this funding is to make sure that we, you know, obviously uh, complete the goals that's in our state digital equity plan, right? And so when you think about organizations, regardless about rural or urban or whatever the case may be, well, think about those organizations that are serving the populations that we had on the slide. So it doesn't have to be an organization that's literally doing digital inclusion or digital equity work as of right now. Because you think about digital equity, digital inclusion, these are all kind of new terms. They're, they're niche, right? Because this is just a, a new problem that the, the, the country has decided that it needs to invest in time in. So. This is how I want to answer your question, but basically organizations that are in your community that are touching the lives of those individuals in those eight covered populations, those are the type of organizations that we would like you to let them know that this funding is available to them to be able to incorporate digital inclusion or digital equity activity into the things that they're already doing. So if you have an organization that you know in your community that works specifically with veterans and they're trying to do things to enhance the lives of veterans and they're doing that in a variety of different ways, this funding can actually uh, be funded in order to create or craft a digital inclusion program, whether it's digital skills, tech, giving them um, devices, things of that nature, to those veterans that that organization is serving and they will have the funds to be able to build that capacity uh, when you can. And then they can uh, uh, reach out to the Office of Broadband as well as the Illinois Broadband Lab to assist them with crafting a program that can embed those uh, those activities into what they're already doing. I hope that, hope that helps you make sense. It's not necessarily has to be a uh, organization doing digital inclusion or digital equity work right now this second. That's probably not a lot, especially in rural areas. But if you know of organizations that are doing work in the social services in those eight covered populations, we want them to know that this funding is available and we want to give them the assistance to be able to start bringing in those services to those populations. I hope that helps. Thanks, Anita. And Robbie, if you have I any points to add there. I want to I want to leave room for other people's questions. I just want to say yes with the broadband ready program, you know, we're working with universities in each region across the state. And so 
Um, as it particularly relates to the kind of urban and rural question, um, one of the advantages I think of working with the higher education universities is because those off, often are the kind of main collaborators in the region. So just off the top of my head, I know that Southeastern region uh, working with Eastern Illinois University recognizes um, kind of working with schools is really the main kind of way to kind of integrate into the communities as best as possible. It's really just, I think, identifying where people are. And so that's certainly an avenue or a channel that I want to just kind of raise for people is that that program exists and they're doing work often engaging with undergraduate students to do digital literacy courses um, and kind of directly having grad assistant fellowships with digital equity projects themselves. There's a lot more that I could say. I want to leave it for questions, but if someone has a direct follow-up, I'm happy to share more. Thanks. Thanks. Um, and I know we're getting some questions about that notice of funding opportunity for the grant program and the different categories that will be available. Um, so we'll send around the slide so you can start to get an idea of what those might be. I just wanna share the huge disclaimer that um, this is still in the design process. So the best way to really start thinking about your program and what you might wanna apply for is to look at the state digital equity plan. I think the link is in the chat, um, but we are going to have to pretty strictly align any programs that are funded to the specific outcomes, goals, key performance indicators committed to in the plan. Um, and so all of that will kind of be captured through that notice of funding opportunity. Separately, if you are interested in participating in the design process, we've had a couple different um, design workshops thus far, some online, some in person. Our next one is on June 7th. Um, and so would love to, you know, we'll put information as a follow-up email for you to get involved. But the idea behind that is um, we don't want to design this program behind closed doors. We want your expertise, your perspectives from operating programs like this on the ground to inform uh, the program design. So when this NOFO does hit the street, it's something that folks are really excited about applying to. Um, and with that, I'm going to go back to the chat to, to go through some questions. Um, so we have a question back to the broad theme of digital equity. Could you describe briefly um, how to understand this term in the current context. Definitely. So um, I think this is a great lesson. We should add a slide on what is digital equity in this uh, presentation for next time. Um, but digital equity is a state that we're trying to reach where everyone in Illinois has access to high quality, affordable internet devices and the support skills and confidence that they need to use the internet and use technology to meet their full potential thrive and participate in Illinois' modern economy. Um, so we are focused on these covered populations because these are folks who have been identified to have um, more historic disinvestment who may be further from achieving that state of digital equity. Um, but really we wanna lift everyone up to be able to participate in our modern economy and thrive using internet and technology. So I hope that that helps. Um, there's some questions about eligibility of public libraries. Um, so typically libraries have fallen under units of local government. Um, libraries will certainly be eligible for these funds. I would just keep an eye out for the specific guidance on which category you should apply under. Just looking down here. Um, is there a plan to communicate to everyone when the NOFO gets released in September? Yes. Um, so we'll be doing a big outreach push. And part of hosting these sessions around grant capacity building and our co-design sessions is um, not just to get the information about grant readiness out there, but also to just raise the overall level of statewide awareness that these funds are coming and that these programs exist. So, um, you know, get ready for toolkits, social media, flyers, one pagers that we'll be blasting out to make sure that you can serve as those connectors uh, to be sending that uh, to anyone who you think would be a strong applicant for these programs. And I believe someone has put our intake form in the chat, but I highly recommend filling out our intake form. Um, it's a really simple contact list um, that will just make sure that you are kind of in the know on, on all of these opportunities. Um, I'm seeing a, a comment about a health clinic. So as you'll see in the digital equity plan, 
in addition to goals, there's a series of outcomes. So by connecting everyone to the internet, what do we actually want to achieve? Um, one of those big outcomes is healthcare access. So allowing folks to see their doctor from uh, the comfort of their home if the nearest primary care doctor is you know, a five hour drive and that's a full day trip. And that's just one example. There's also outcomes around workforce, applying for jobs, being able to do your homework at home. Um, so we'll certainly be looking for applications that are um, showing how this project helps your community achieve those outcomes. All right, another question, in terms of a consortium to serve a single community, the proposal is likely to span several of the program categories listed. Will a proposal addressing multiple aspects run into problems given the, no the way the NOFA will be structured? Um, no is the short answer. I think the assumption is that projects will likely cross over multiple uh, program categories. So all of that will be outlined in the NOFO, and I think we'll be doing some more detailed outreach once, once that NOFO is ready and written and finalized. Um, but the assumption is that it's very likely that, you know, a digital skills program may also have a device distribution component. All right. I'm seeing a comment about youth centers, um, a local PCs for people branch. Yeah, I think just to echo what Anita shared earlier, um, we are not just looking for organizations who consider themselves broadband or digital equity organizations. We're really looking for organizations that are, you know, institutions um, trusted in their local communities and already have existing touch points with residents um, because that will help us invest in sustainable solutions. And so this is a five-year program, but the goal is that by making these investments now in organizations who are already trusted and sort of known in communities, um, it will have lasting impact down the line. So uh, new to, if you're new to digital equity, we invite you to, to come along for this ride. All right, a media toolkit. Yeah, that, these are all great ideas. So we'll be working on some strong outreach materials. And I think, you know, I know folks are really excited about and have questions about the contents of the NOFO. Um, I just wanna re-emphasize that, you know, putting your program ideas aside, focusing on being data pre-qualified, um, making sure you're up to date with any audits, uh, completing that ICQ risk assessment. Those are all things you can do now, three months ahead of time. Um, so by the time the NOFO comes out, you know that you're pre-qualified, um, there won't be any surprises and you can be really laser focused on putting together as strong of an application as possible. Any final questions? All right. Well, I love I love to see this activity in the chat and thank you again, um, Amber, for providing us those details um, on uh, the ins and outs of being pre-qualified. Ling Ling, thank you so much for leading the way on this webinar. Um, any final questions for Amber about GATA or pre-qualification? All right. Well, you know where to find us. We will send out a recap email uh, with the slides and recording. And uh, Mike, I'll hand it back over to you to close us out. Great. Thanks so much, Devin. Um, to everybody that was on today, we had a great group. Thanks so much for all the questions. And uh, thanks in particular to Devin Lingling and Amber for the and Anita as well for the terrific information. Uh, the series continues, as was noted during the um, uh, at, at one point in the slides, the next series, the next session in the series is coming up on June 5th, again at one o'clock, uh, same channel, same station, how to write a great grant application, and that'll be followed on Wednesday, June 12th, again at one, with the final in the series on building a strong digital inclusion program. As always, uh, check out our, <clears throat> the University of Illinois Extension's website for additional information. 
uh, in addition to all the links that have been provided in the course of the conversation today. And generally, thank you all for attending. We look forward to seeing you at our next session. So have a great day. Bye, everyone.